Well, hi, friends, and welcome to our second episode of the Authentic Self Wellness Wisdom Series. I'm very excited today because I am joined by a longtime friend, colleague, source of inspiration, Dr. Leland Stillman. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Margaret. It's great to be here. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and read your bio because I want people to truly understand who you are, what you're all about, your mission, your beliefs, and also how they can contact you and work with you. So Dr. Leland Stillman, he specializes in holistic and natural medicine. From an early age, he knew that he wanted to be a physician. He actually did struggle with ear and sinus infections as a child. I myself, I did that as well. His passion is helping young people achieve optimal performance and specifically helping them to manage allergies and autoimmune diseases in, hol in holistic and natural medicine. Dr. Stillman grew up in Richmond, Virginia, and now his practice is in the nearby town of Colonial Heights. Very cool. So in addition to this, Dr. Stillman has a really interesting program, uh, an online course that we'll talk about at the end of this interview. It's called Polar Bear Fitness. I'll go ahead and I'll put a link down below if you guys want to check that out. Uh, if you do want to visit him in person, if you are in the Colonial Heights area, he is at the Anders Wellness, uh, Anders Wellness Consulting, and I'll go ahead and I'll put the phone number um, in the box down below so people can call up and schedule an appointment with you. So again, welcome. Great Love to be having here. you here. So as you know, today we're talking about the benefits of being cold. Now, you and I, we've talked about this, like this is nothing new to us. But for a lot of our viewers, they may still be thinking that, okay, being warm and almost being hot is healthy, that it's better. And it's like we've been conditioned to think that way. You know, when we get sick, our mom used to bundle us up in coats and put all the hats and the scarves on. But today you're going to talk about why being cold is actually better for us. Right. So cold became something that I became interested in when a colleague of mine, Dr. Jack Cruz, uh, he told me to live like a polar bear, which is what inspired polar bear fitness. Mm -hmm. And Jack had gone back and done all this research into what the cold does physiologically to human beings. And he, uh, in part, got interested in it because we are using it in modern medicine. We're using it in people who've had uh, what we call hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, which is a fancy way of saying brain damage from a heart attack. Mm -hmm. uh, we're using it in people who are having spinal cord trauma. We're using it postoperatively in hip or joint replacements. Mm -hmm. um, Short, you know, you can use it on any joint after it's had a replacement. And I'm seeing my colleagues in the orthopedic world, you know, bone doctors who are, who are replacing joints, fixing joints, use it more and more often. So I'd already run into cold therapy and actually used it in the hospital, but I didn't realize how important it was and how powerful it was as a therapy for people who are not in the hospital just as a way of maintaining health. Right. And in order to understand really how this works, you have to go back to how really mammalian metabolism is wired. People have to remember that we are not wired to be uh, comfortable or fashionable. Uh, you know, when people complain about losing weight, what they need to remember is that they're wired to gain weight when they're in a season of abundance, right? And then mm -hmm. they're doing that so that in the cold times, they can generate heat in order to stay warm. So, you know, every like kindergartner probably at some point wonders why you know, we are not just all dinosaur snacks and why we are somehow this squishy kind of weak mammal on planet earth that's become the apex predator, right? There's much more fearsome animals in the history of this planet that could have dominated the earth's surface. Right. And the reason that mammals dominate the earth is that we can generate heat inside of our bodies and we do this in response to cold. Now on the surface, that sounds actually quite simplistic. You get cold, your body burns, burns fat and sugar in order to create heat to keep you warm, to keep you from freezing to death. Yeah. But in fact, this is actually linked into our metabolism in an incredibly complex way from the brain stem to your adipose tissue, your fat tissue, to all the organs of your body. And people today, you know, more than ever are struggling with weight loss and their blood sugar. So diabetes. Mm -hmm. And what people need to realize is that every is that basically the cold helps us to manage these conditions and we're really wired to live in a, in a universe where we actually get cold. This is especially true as you go further and further away from the equator. Why? This is where the polar bears come in. And I created Polar Bear Fitness because I wanted people to understand 
how diabetes and weight gain work in nature. Mm. Einstein told us to look deep into nature to understand everything better. And I think that that is maybe the best piece of advice I can give anyone who wants to reverse some kind of chronic disease. So polar bears live at a high latitude where there's tons of food around during the summer. They actually could kill more food than they eat. And during the summer, they gain hundreds of pounds despite eating a low protein, high fat diet, mm. which is pretty amazing. And the reason that they're gaining weight is that they're under constant light. We define the Arctic Circle as the latitude north of which you can see the sun for 24 hours on the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. And so during that season, the bears are never really sleeping because the bears are under constant light. And anyone who's ever worked the night shift, who's had a period in their life with a lot of stress where they're staying up late and working on term papers in school, yep. those people will all tell you, they're like, yeah, you know, well, I stress aid and then I gain weight. They think they're gaining weight just because they're eating. But it turns yeah. out that if you take two people and you have one of them eat more at night and the other one eat during the day, the one who's eating more at night is going to gain more weight despite eating the exact same number of calories. And this is all mediated by light and melatonin, which is the hormone of darkness, and not by, um, by just what they're eating. So people really need to understand that. Mm -hmm. And the cold comes in when it comes down. Well, the cold comes in as simply the trigger to the body to start to burn, um, burn fuel for heat. And this makes it one of the most powerful tools we have to actually rewire someone's metabolism. Interesting. Why, why do you think we've all been conditioned to think that being warm is healthier and it's better for us? What, I'm just kind of curious in your opinion, how did we get to this place? So I think that has to do with the fact that sauna therapy has been such a success. And, you know, people will say, may, may, may be taken aback that I just been plugging the benefits of cold therapy, but now I'm talking about how beneficial sauna is. Um, it's really interesting when you look at the effects of these two therapies. And in my opinion, there's no better way to kind of like recharge your battery than sauna and cold. Mm. Um, as obviously, it's a blanket statement. So there's a lot, of, a lot of caveats. And I like to see people in person to, to give them a whole wellness plan. But basically, right. the basically sauna, when you look at the effects of infrared and red light on mitochondria and cellular function, this is what photobiomodulation is all about. And really, I think light is going to be the emerging um, therapeutic modality that we're using more and more as we study it mm -hmm. uh, going forward in both modern, conventional, and in unconventional or alternative, holistic, whatever you want to call it, medicine. Good. And what people need to understand about this is that burning fat, maintaining metabolic health, avoiding everything from cancer to autoimmune diseases to allergies means keeping your metabolism and your mitochondria healthy. Mm -hmm. And you can change mitochondrial function just by changing the light that those mitochondria see. Hmm. And if you think about it, what you're doing when you, when you create heat from your, when your body burns fat for heat, what you're really doing is you're creating light that's emitted from your mitochondria. Hmm. And people who want to learn more about this should look up the work of a guy named Gerald Pollack or Gilbert Ling. That's the really super heavy duty sciencey type stuff. Gerald Pollack wrote a great book where he talks about how light structures water inside of a cell in order to create really the structure we depend upon for the cells to function. And this is why when you ask most people in health and wellness, why sauna works to help people, they'll give you a lot of biochemical answers, mm -hmm. but they won't get down to this level of detail where they're looking at how it affects uh, mitochondrial function. So sauna is really an effective tool for this reason. Um, and I love pairing it with the cold, for the simple, well, not only because it has benefits of its own, but also because the main reason that people don't want to get cold is they hate the feeling of shivering and being cold afterward. Yeah. And if you put them into a sauna, you avoid that. And in fact, you know, nothing is more satisfying than a meal eaten when hungry and nothing is more satisfying than a sauna entered when cold. Yeah. So it becomes like my idea of a good Saturday is like going from the sauna to the cold plunge, back to the sauna, back to the cold. Plunge. I can see you doing, doing all that. Day doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and I tell people, I really, t I pound the table about this with people in, in cold environments because all ancient peoples in these environments, Scandinavia, Russia, particularly Finland, these people, uh, all have a history of sauna. The native Americans have a history of sweat lodge. They are, they are recreating the sun using wood and you know most of sunlight 42 percent of it is infrared light that's just heat 
I can't remember, but I think it's like 10 or 15% more is red light. So we're wired to run on this light and modern artificial light is loaded with, with blue and green and they completely edited out the, the lower spectrum, which is one reason why people have so many problems with diseases that are linked to artificial light and particularly artificial light at night. Right. And if our viewers follow you on social media, when you do your live broadcast and your videos, they'll yeah. probably notice that you wear glasses, right? Um, the red glasses. Right. So can, can you speak to that? I know that's kind yeah, of a sure. topic, but. So, well, but it's so it's, you know, I, I, you can already tell I'm, I'm jumping around a lot, right? Why am I jumping around? Because it's all connected. It's all the, right? yeah. Exactly. Yeah. John Muir said that when you tug on one thing in nature, you find out it's connected to everything else. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. That's basically what he said. And he's right. Um, so going back to the polar bear, right? My favorite teaching example. So all of the, I tell people that all the health and wellness tips that they are, and really particularly all the weight loss and diabetes tips they're going to hear about in the health and wellness sphere, polar bears have already figured out and have been using for all of their evolutionary history. Yeah. And 25,000 polar bears, which is how many polar bears there are approximately in nature, cannot be wrong. Yeah. And they use these tricks every single winter. So what is the Arctic winter? The days get shorter, the temperatures go down. This means there's less light in the environment. As there's less and less light in the environment, bear melatonin levels increase. Melatonin is something most people have heard of as a sleeping aid. Many people have tried it. What they don't realize is their bodies actually make it. But they, the production of melatonin is linked to the light you see during the day. And then what happens is it gets stored in the pineal gland deep in the brain. And after three to four hours, of an absence of blue or green light, that's when the melatonin is released. Mm -hmm. What melatonin does around the body is suppresses appetite, turns on fat burning, and renovates your mitochondria so you can burn fat. Right. So polar bears could eat literally anything they wanted during the Arctic summer and still lose weight in the winter because the cold and the melatonin are, are suppressing their appetites, turning on fat burning, and fixing their mitochondria so they can burn fat. And, you know, you talk to anyone who works the night shift, you talk to anyone who lives a very blue shifted life with a lot of technology, mm -hmm. they're always telling you about how hard it is to lose weight, how hard it is to manage their blood sugar, all these different things. Yeah. And they fail to see this link with light. So you can wear glasses that block blue light from entering your, your eyes. And I got a pair right here. And they're these, you know, these dark red lenses. Um, and the, the key, key to understand is that this is mediated primarily through the eye. A certain amount of melatonin suppression can happen through the skin, but it's primarily through the eye. These are uh, raw optics, blue blockers. I'm, I'm an affiliate for them and for uh, blue blocks. And for people who are interested, blue blocks is going to have a, uh, a Black Friday sale this coming week. I think the code is like BF 2019. Do you want to, after this interview, send me a, your affiliate link and I'll go ahead and I'll link to that down below for everybody if they're interested. Yeah. So I found the table about blue blockers for all of my patients, friends, family, because, you know, for me, they had such an incredible impact on how much I was eating and I wasn't struggling with my weight, but I had struggled to frankly, just keep enough gas in the tank. And what blew me away is I went from eating three to four times a day and eating maybe 3000 calories a day to eating like maybe 2000 calories, particularly in the winter when the days are short and I have a lot of melatonin running around yep. and I would only eat twice a day and never feel hungry. So that was a massive shift in my metabolism that was mediated just by a pair of glasses. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Well, we got a little off topic, but I did want to bring that up because uh, it's, it, it's so interesting. Like you said, the link between the light, between the cold, how it's all connected. Right. Well, it's really important that people talk about it because I worry about people trying to get cold because really the cold is saying, hey, it's winter. Well, yeah. how does it make any sense for you to live for 16 hours in a brightly lit environment and be cold at night? That's like not part of nature's template. When it's right. dark, it's cold because the main, practically the only source of light in our, on planet earth is the sun. So all, so you've got to get your light cycles right if you're going to burn fat and rewire your metabolism. It's and true. so, so, so getting cold and trying to use cold therapeutically when you're not living under the right light and you don't have appropriate melatonin levels. To me, it's like, it's like driving a manual car and trying to, trying to drive on the highway in second gear. It's just a bad idea, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I always, I, that's why, you know, polar bear fitness is a very holistic approach. I talk about 
the light you're seeing, water you're drinking, when you eat, what you eat, all these different things all fit together um, just the way they do in nature. That's cool. That's really cool. Okay. So for those who are watching that are still kind of like, eh, I don't know, I hate being yeah, cold. Right. It's, it's uncomfortable and I don't know how to do it. Give us just like a super cookie cutter list of the benefits to help kind of sell it, so to speak. Weight so loss obviously all, is a big one. I, I want to actually start with something else. I am as much of a baby about cold exposure as everybody <laughs> else. And when I first, first I, I've never really liked the cold. I've always liked saunas. I've always liked being hot. Me too. And what I've realized is that most people don't actually understand their physiological responses to cold. Most people who I'm talking about cold exposure where they're like, oh yeah, I take a cold shower for two minutes and I hate it. Okay. The key to understanding how to get cold comfortably lies in something called the mammalian dive reflex. So the mammalian dive reflex is something that's conserved across all mammals. We're all descended ultimately from, or we're, we're so closely related that we've all got this reflex in us. And one of its benefits is that when you submerge in cold water, it suppresses your shivering response and you don't notice the cold. Interesting. So when I jump into a, an ice bath, it's at zero degrees centigrade, 33 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't, I feel the cold, but, and I, and I used to, it used to be difficult to get in, but I started to get in and get used to it. And over time it became not so much a chore, but something that I really look forward to. Yeah. Now, when do people really suffer? They suffer when they try and do cold exposure in cold air. So like, for example, there, there's no time that you're going to want to like get cold less than if you're like out there on a really windy day mm -hmm. or in the rain. And for some reason, wind chill just really drives people nuts. But people would be, will be shocked at how comfortable they'll be in a cold water bath at like 50 degrees. I, I tell no one to start below 50 degrees. Okay. Going below 50 degrees is for... For people who have experience, not for amateurs. Yeah, um, don't just go like exactly. And I cover all the safety features in polar bear fitness because there's a lot to good. sort of like figuring out who it's appropriate for, who it's not appropriate for. You know, should you talk to your doctor? All that kind of stuff. Good. But people will be shocked at how comfortable they are in a cold bath, let alone even an ice bath, hmm. um, because this, of this effect of the mammalian dive reflex. Interesting. Over time, your 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 capillary beds shut down, and you just don't even notice the cold, and you feel very comfortable. Now, the next thing that people hate is when they get out, the, the, the arteries open and blood flows out back into that skin and it cools your blood. And it, it's a very unnerving experience when it's not really unnerving. It's just, it's an unusual feeling, but you'll actually feel cold blood rushing back into your lungs. And it feels the way it would feel if you were to run like a full out sprint for like a hundred yards on a really cold day. It feels like your lungs are cold. It's not uncomfortable. It's just, you'll it's notice weird. It. It's new. Yeah. If you know Wim Hof method, they call this after drop. Hmm. So after that, that cold blood that's being cooled by your skin coming back into your body, that can really trigger a lot of shivering, especially if your skin temperature remains really cold. Yeah. I actually have read accounts of Navy SEALs having nightmares about how strongly they shiver in the water off El Dorado in California, because for people who don't know the Navy SEALs, it's not just a rigorous physical training program. They have them spend hours and hours and hours in the Pacific, which is freezing at yep. that latitude. Or I mean, going not literally in it, yeah. freezing. Yeah. But it's like 40 or 50 degrees on a good day. Yeah. In the um, summer, it's like still, you can't go in. <laughs> yeah. And you know, they're just punishing the Navy SEALs as much as possible. And they will talk about, they call it jackhammering is the way, is how they describe the severity of the shivers. That effect depends upon the air temperature you emerge from the cold bath into. So if you go from a cold tank into a 50 degree house, you are going to shiver a lot and you're going to feel miserable and you're not really going to be able to get a lot of things done because you're literally shivering your heart. Sure. But if you go back into a warm house, you feel fine. If you go into a sauna, you'll feel amazing. There's a reason why traditionally people in Finland, Russia, when they sauna, they don't just sauna, they go back out into the snow and they get back into the sauna. Yeah, just go back and forth. Right. It so does this is how amazing. you keep it comfortable, mm -hmm. you know? And eventually people begin to realize there's a reason that there's a cold plunge in the spa. There's a reason that people like me have a cold plunge right next to their sauna. And it's, it's because, you know, you can spend a lot of money on diets, supplements, 
um, you know, all sorts of things. This is simple. You buy a sauna, it lasts you for a long time. You buy a cold plunge, you know, it can last you forever. Well, and I would think too, uh, cause I myself have looked into getting a far infrared sauna, just a little one for the corner of the house. Yeah. Pricey. So for mm -hmm. someone that's looking to get into cold therapy or, you know, just embrace this whole concept, what we're talking about today, it seems to me that it's a lot more economical to hop into a cold bath or I've seen photos of you um, and it looks what looks like a freezer that you can just get pretty much anywhere, right? That is what I use, yeah. Yeah, and then fill it up with water, some ice, and hey, guess right. what? You just saved yourself thousands of dollars. Right, and if, uh, if buying or owning a sauna is not an option, I'm not a big fan of the ones that are, I'm, my, my favorite type of sauna is the traditional finished sauna, yeah. where you've got hot stones that you're generating heat from, because mm -hmm. that's gonna maximize the amount of heat transfer. Um, my second favorite thing is just to get in front of a, a roaring fire. And you know, if you've got a backyard where you can put a cold tank, fire pit is like the next logical addition to that That's backyard, amazing. In my opinion. That's um, I, am I really like living in houses with fireplaces. Mm -hmm. When I've been renting, that's what I've been looking for. And when I, when I do eventually buy, it will be a house with a fireplace. Yeah. Um, and then you know, there's a lot of different indoor units. My only concern with the indoor units is that a lot of them have pretty uh, high electrical and magnetic fields that people can get exposed to. And for me, a lot of the indoor infrared sauna units just aren't hot enough. I want my sauna to be like 200 degrees. I want it I know, to be borderline I'm the same uncomfortable. Way. Yeah, and, and a lot of people I know who've compared the two feel the same way. Um, but again, it's, you know, it's people's preference and um, it's people's preference and there's not a wrong answer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, to, so to go back to the health benefits, because we get excited and we talk about, you know, we can go on and on, you and I. <laughs> this could honestly be like a two to three hour episode. What else? What can we expect from being cold with our bodies? Like, how will that make us feel? And when can we expect to see these results? So the number, my favorite case is actually my mother, because she is totally honest with me about everything. And of course, I talk to her on a regular basis. She told me once that she was never going to get into the cold tank. There was no way. She's 76. Mm -hmm. And she immediately started to see, she finally got into the cold tank because she had such severe back pain that wasn't managed. She wasn't able to manage it with anything else. Yeah. And she got into the cold tank finally because of her back. And she immediately saw rapid pain relief. Her back pain that was pretty much crippling is how she described it to me is now gone. Wow. And she saw that within a matter of one or two treatments. Wow. I mean, she called me after her first ice bath and it wasn't an ice bath. It was just 50 degrees. Sure. And she said, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I can't believe how well this works. And that's a response that I've heard from a lot of people. Like somebody else I know um, dropped their blood pressure by 10 points within a week of starting cold therapy, just five, 10 days, five, sorry, five, 10 minutes um, a day for a few days running a 10, a 10 point drop in systolic blood pressure is huge. We sometimes have to start two or three medications to get that effect. Sure. Just to give people some idea of how important that is. Um, my mother also told me that she immediately started to see weight loss benefits. And what people need to understand about the cold is that it is immediately going to tell your fat cells, hey, it's time for us to give up our energy to the system. And it is time for the system to metabolize that energy into heat. Yeah. And so, you know, the amount of weight loss that happens uh, really is proportional to the amount of cold that you use. And if people want to know how dramatic the weight loss that you can get when you control your light environment, get into a cold tank and eat a, um, a, a paleolithic and particularly a ketogenic diet. And, you know, the, te the, the, the most interesting cases or most dramatic cases I've seen is, is Jack Cruz who alerted me to all of it. Um, and he calls his diet EpiPaleo RX for people who want to look it up. He went from like 400 pounds, morbidly obese, and you can go check his social media right now and he looked, he's a normal weight. And most people need to do bariatric surgery in order to get that kind of result. Yeah. Um, and you'll see similar results from people in the ketogenic diet community, but you know, using the cold is just another tool you can use, let alone blocking blue light, melatonin, all that kind of stuff. So, and I'm sure this, you go, that you go over this in your program, but what's a good recommended amount of exposure to cold, let's say on a weekly basis, or does it really depend on a person and what it is that they're trying to achieve? 
So that, it, it certainly depends on what they're trying to achieve, but it also depends on what's their, what they're getting out into. So let's say that I'm at home in 98 degree heat in the middle of July, and I am just gonna hang out in the, after, in the afternoon and just read in my backyard. I might hop into a, a zero degree cold tank, freezing cold tank for 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna go straight out and lay in the sun and warm yeah. back out. And I won't shiver and I'll be comfortable and I'll feel fine. If I were to do that in December and then try and go to work, I would be shivering for the next hour and I wouldn't be very productive. So people are going to have to find their own, their own limits. When you start with 50 degree water, what you're going to find is that five, 10, 15 minutes of exposure is a lot. And you have a significant amount of shivering, maybe even just after that. And I have to mention there's people who are on uh, particularly medications like beta blockers or alpha blockers. People have low thyroid hormone. People have a lot of adrenal fatigue or who have low adrenal or stress hormones. All those are necessary to turn on fat burning and heat generation. So those people struggle with acclimating to the cold. And that's another reason why it's really worth working with a practitioner to do this. I do this routinely with people because um, if, I, if I can't get their, their thyroid hormone levels appropriate, then there's no way they're ever going to be able to really tolerate the cold. So um, people will find their own, their own limits. I tell people to go up by no more than five minutes of exposure at a time, yeah. um, depending on the method that they're using, and then to just find their limits, find their, their comfort zone, and find out how much they shiver when they get out. The bottom line is really that like five or 10 minutes a day is a lot and can have some significant benefits. Um, for a lot of people, it's gonna be more convenient for them to do like 20 minutes here and then like 20 minutes two or three days later. You know, it's like a cold bath becomes a big, a, sort of a big event in the week and they spend more time in. Yeah. Again, all depends on your own personal comfort level. People really need to, to not um, go overboard because that's how they get hurt. You know, being conservative, being cautious, and just you'll find ways to integrate into your life. And that's part of why I made Polar Bear Fitness is that so many people had so many questions about how I set things up or how I make it convenient. It became a very, it's become a very convenient part of my life that I don't spend a lot of time. You know, I'm not running to the grocery store, buying ice, coming home, making the bath. You know, it, it, it can take a ton of time and it can be very, very convenient. I spent a lot of time and effort figuring out how to make it convenient. Yeah. And that's awesome. And I want to wrap up there too, because, um, I mean that your course pretty much addresses everything that we've talked about today, but in, right. in more in depth manner. And that way, right. if somebody is looking to incorporate this type of therapy into their routine, um, they can gain some more clarity on how they can get started, what tools they need. Right. Um, and the amount of exposure that's going to be right for them, like you said, depending on their condition and yeah. what it is that they're looking to achieve. So, yeah, absolutely. So, um, people can find you. What is your social media handles? It's uh, Stillman at, MD. Okay. And I will go ahead and I will link that in the description box below. I'll also include a link to polar bear fitness, uh, polar bear dot fitness. I love that URL. It's very, very clever. Thank you. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up, my friend? Uh, stay tuned for a promotion for Polar Bear Fitness uh, around the holiday season. I have to figure that out, but uh, there's no better time to make like a polar bear. That's a great, yeah, especially with uh, all the resolutions and whatnot coming up. Perfect. Yeah, and people, you know, I feel sorry for people who try to lose weight or not gain weight without all this information because it's just, it's just an exercise in willpower that's just so miserable. Um, and when people realize how light shapes life, they're like, Oh my gosh, this is the easy way. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a big difference. Exactly. Cool. Well, we'll stay tuned for that and make sure you follow Dr. Stillman on social. So you don't miss that promotion because I know, if I know you, it's going to be good. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much again, Dr. Stillman for being here. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to the second episode of the Authentic Self Wellness Wisdom Series. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. Make sure that you turn on that notification bell so you never miss an update. And until next time, have a happy and a healthy day.